Hey everyone, welcome back. It's your boy D, and this is D's Daily DD. Um, bringing a video to you on this wonderful Saturday, right? Um, had a busy week with work, it's been kicking my ass for sure. So that's why I haven't made a video the past couple days. And I did want to make one yesterday, but I just wasn't in a good mood. I wasn't ready to, you know, I didn't want to bring that energy here. So I decided to not make one yesterday. I'm just going to make one today, even though I normally don't make videos on Saturdays, right? But I do have some thoughts, some opinions. This is not financial advice. Don't take it for financial advice. Take it for educational and entertainment purposes only. And uh, right now there's a nice storm outside. So you might see the light um, coming in and out um, in the back or whatever. But um, yeah, I got some some thoughts I want to bring to y'all. I have also been spending my time uh, finishing up this, this book, which I still highly recommend. One of the best books I have ever read. A lot of key information in here. And it's telling you how, you know, different people perceive money or how you can kind of look at money or think of money and to open up your your mindset on uh what money is and how people use money to do things and so on and in the long term aspect of it too in the short term and it's cool because um you know i love the stock market i've been in it for a while um and this also has a lot of you know good references to what has happened in the past um so i did draw up some things uh i was noticing there's some more news coming out as far as uh banks that are in trouble liquidity issues warnings Everything that, you know, the AMC community has talked about in the past and, and thought about and done the DD with, it's actually happening right now um, in real time. There was an announcement from Credit Suisse that I want to show you guys. And then also Adam Aaron, you know, has, has been tweeting some tweets, which I think there is hidden messages in there personally, because um, that's what, what's his face? Ryan Cohen was doing before the AMC or the, before the GameStop squeeze last year, you know, two years ago, whatever, whenever it happened. And uh, he was, you know, kind of leaving hidden messages in the tweets. So I believe that's what Adam Aaron is doing here, too. And um, there were some new videos that people posted yesterday of, you know, him talking in front of the crowd. And to me, he sounds pretty confident. And what I notice is that he's not afraid to go in front of people. Um, you know, he has some news that he's going to release, he said, here soon in the next couple weeks. I think it has to do with Highcroft. Um there's some news that came out about them paying off some debt, which I think is good, right? If you're struggling, if you're going to go bankrupt, why would you even be paying off the debt? Um, so I'll get into that information and uh, yeah, let's do it. I got some info, right? So let's switch this up and do the first thing that I got is right here. Um, the power of the market. You know, most people don't understand that anything can literally happen in the market. You know, especially after seeing what we've been seeing, where it's just been a pretty much a constant downtrend with little pops for the past year or so. And it's amazing how time flies, right? But we are coming up to the end of October. And, um, you know, with this book, a lot of this information right here on this side is coming from the book that I'm reading. And um, it explains how humans are emotional beings. And they make a lot of decisions based on their emotions. And it's just natural. Right. But you have to psychologically learn how to extract extract that when you're in a a trade or, a, you know, playing or trading, not playing, sorry, trading in the markets. But this is uh, straight from the book. And it says here how Netflix stock returned more than thirty five thousand percent in gains from 2002 to 2018. Now, that's a long time frame, but you have to remember and pay attention to that. It, it traded below previous all time highs on 94 percent of its days so it didn't spend a lot of time <clears throat> up there in the huge you know gains area it spent most of its time uh below the previous all-time high and again with monster beverage it returned 319 thousand percent from 1995 to 2018 and this is amongst the highest in history right one of the stocks that has returned the most but it traded below its previous high 95 percent during that period and then what I pay attention to, what I'm looking at right now is AMC, how it's been as low as $1.50 and it's been as high as $72. But right ever since the $72, it's been trading below that number right for a while. So this was uh, AMC yesterday. I was going to make the video yesterday. I did this draw up yesterday, but 
Um, it closed around 771 when you add AMC and Ape. And um, these are these are the current stats on it, right? So you have about 19.7% short interest, 184 million shares on loan, 35% of the free float when you talk about 184 million shares on loan. Now, not all of them are shorted. Uh, they have some that they're holding kind of like the clip, right? They're, they're waiting to see if there's a big run to try to chop it down with those extra shares that they're holding. Now, what I like to look at and what I'm looking at is the cost to borrow fee, how it's holding between 21.8% and on Ortex, it said 25.8% was the average yesterday. And I've been seeing zero shares left from Stonko Tracker for, for a while now and from uh, Stocks Era. Oh, the shorts have not covered. Obviously, right, there's still, they're still a high short interest and liquidity issues. Margin calls have started. History is repeating itself, literally. And short squeeze articles that are coming out from the mainstream media pointing out that there could be a short squeeze here soon. And normally you hear the mainstream media say, oh, it's, it's done. There's nothing's going to happen, blah, 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 right? They were saying that for a while. And now they have switched and there's articles coming out saying to look out for a short squeeze here soon. And none of this is financial advice. I'm holding do your own DD and make your own financial decisions when it comes down to it. All right. Let's switch it up. I got some other things I want to point out. And uh, here's the first one. So, uh Right. It's been a, a choppy week, but bank CEOs increasingly turning pessimistic on the economy. The U.S. economy, the outlook of the U.S. economy from Wall Street's biggest banks is getting gloomier and gloomier after the industry spent the past year and a half trumpeting that the U.S. economy is strong and the U.S. consumer is still resilient. I'm not going to read all of it. I kind of just want to point out this title. And then um, let's go to the Credit Suisse news. So I saw this yesterday. And then there's a follow up, right? So Credit Suisse consults with underwriters as it considers capital options. They're in talks with banks on options if capital is needed. The Fed has issued a notice seeking feedback on potential new requirements for larger banks, including a long term debt requirement. Cities CEO Fraser, I'm concerned about market liquidity and counterparty risk. See, it's all happening. And, you know, everyone always pulls out the Volkswagen rip and it's crazy how it happens like i think at the end the last week of october and if you were to just ignore this piece ignore the the actual squeeze right this would be the same chart amc has basically right you have that run up to 25 it comes back down it has the break up to 72 77 and then now what they brought us all the way back down to kind of like where it started and uh, this is where we are theoretically right nothing's guaranteed but I think we're down here where the fun is going to start soon. Like I said, when Adam Aaron releases that news that he's wanting to release, he said he can't say too much uh, because the earnings hasn't came out yet. But they did announce they paid off around $500 million of debt. So looking at it like this, um, you know, they are $5 billion in debt. And so they took away the 500 million. So you're left with like 4.5 billion around there. And then they have about a billion in cash. So you remove that. Now you're left with about 3.5 billion in cash. And now I think he has something up his sleeve that he's going to be releasing with either like Highcroft or with the Ape shares, the ones that you know City has that could potentially be sold. A lot of news, a lot of posts about that. Um, and this was the the news for from three hours ago. So it's preparing Credit Suisse is preparing to sell parts of its Swiss domestic bank as it attempts to close a capital hole. Of around 4.5 billion Swiss franc, 4.48 billion, the Financial Times has reported. Here's the, the actual article from Reuters, Routers, however you say it. And um, yeah, that was what I was going to show you there. Here's the AMC note talking about the debt and the money they raised to pay off that debt. And um, what I'm saying with history repeating itself, take a look at this. So this was December 11th. <clears throat> Just kind of comparing to when they raised um, about 100 million of cash from Mudrick Capital. And then go back. They had raised the 917 million by the 25th, right? 125, 21. Then take a look at where we're at right now. We're about to get the news, right? That hopefully, I think that they raised the money from Ape to pay off more debt or from Highcroft. 
um, the gold, right? The, the explorations they've been doing. So that's the news I'm waiting on personally. And I think that's one that's something that could start trigger some upward price action. And that's how I think history is repeating itself. Um, right. This is reporting 98 million shares on loan for AMC. This is reporting 35 million shares on loan for Ape. And this is what I'm talking about. Still no shares. Zero. Um, it's been at zero for some time now. And I keep pointing this out. Um, the shares, well, the shares available have dramatically reduced. Right now we're at this point where, right, there's no shares available. And I think that has to do with the liquidity issues that, you know, the lenders are like, nope, I'm not lending them out no more. We're going to see some turmoil. We might see, you know, a market crash, market event here soon. So I believe uh, when, when they raise the rates again, this is going to shoot up again, the cost to borrow. And at what point as a short seller, do you, do you tap out and say, okay, this is not, it's not worth, um, shorting this anymore because the fee is killing me on the side. Um, AMC is paying off its debt as the economy is slowing down right now. AMC has done a better, you know, um, they have made better decisions with the finances to, to pay off debt instead of going into more debt. Okay. Um, just another source, zero shares available to borrow. And then uh, I'm just going to go through these tabs here. If you haven't read this, this is a pretty good read. And it's showing why Gary Gensler is uh, the main point of this. But supposedly, right, it, the SEC is set to launch a regulatory broadside in the coming weeks against brokerage and trading giants, including Charles Schwab, Robin Hood, and mega donor Ken Griffin Citadel Securities, according to interviews with more than a dozen executives, lawmakers, regulators, and investor advocates. So it's usually just talk until we see action. That's all we've seen is just talk. So let's see if this leads to anything, but this has a lot of information. If you want to, you know, read it, it's a good read. And then uh, more things, right? So the UK cliff edge arises. Bank of England prepares to end its emergency bond buying. That ended yesterday, so I want to see how it affects, you know, the next coming weeks. Um, and then Yellen also said that it could spill over into the U.S. markets, you know, what's going on globally. So I think people are starting to pay attention, and I think the SEC and the government are going to get involved. And we're going to see a managed event for the squeeze, quote-unquote, how they say um, oh, and these are the articles I wanted to show you guys. So this was from October 11th. Ape and AMC stock short sellers continue to increase their positions. And this was what stuck out to me. So an unusually high number of failure to delivers and AMC could be due to naked short selling, which we have been saying for a long time, the apes, allegedly. And then despite AMC's and Ape's poor performance this quarter, stock performance, there's a good chance we'll see another short squeeze. Okay, they're telling you right here. And the short sellers are in, you know, there's about 20% short interest. And what this is saying, um, you know, Cineworld has filed for bankruptcy. So AMC could pretty soon be and have most of the market share when it comes to the movies. And Adam Aaron was saying again yesterday, right? Third quarter is kind of whatever. But he expects more action in the next you know, after the fourth quarter and, and moving forward, as far as like more movies, they're going to have more movies to show, which means more money coming in through the door. All the FTD data um, and why it's saying it's dangerous is because right now they're saying it reached the level of what the stock should be worth um, as far as a fair value play for them, in their opinion. And they're saying that's what could trigger a lot because any slither of good news could send the price again, you know, mooning. And here's uh, another one, AMC Entertainment. It's time to go along with possible short squeeze. This one's older from September 27th. But remember, they said they have turned bullish for two to five year prospectus. So that's about it. Just got the inflation report right here. It was 8.2. Um, still high. And I don't want to freak you out. Don't want you to get scared. But just you have to know this stuff. I mean, what I saw is you see how it gets darker. That means it's higher, the inflation. So the last time we go back and it was around this time, same thing, 8.3. And then as the months came, you know, this is by year, 1981, 1980. So it took about two additional years in order for the inflation to come down. 
Okay, so that's just what happened before. It's not guaranteed to happen again. If the feds move faster and they start raising more rates, then I think they could slow it down even more. But um, they need to obviously continue if the inflation is still this high. We have um, around the same thing, 7.8, 8.3 in November here. And it took another year. It was recession, 1974, 1975. And then it started to calm down. So from here, it could start to, you know, I think it's still going to go up a little bit before it starts to come down. But if they lose control and they don't act on it, it could start spiking fast and higher. And it would take a long time, right? A year or two in order to see a recovery. But that's just what's, that's just some numbers, some data. Nothing's set in stone. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I really got. Wanted to bring out some of that information um, to show you guys. Remember, always make your own decisions. I'm hanging in here tight. I think history is repeating itself, and I think we're about to see another run. Maybe the short squeeze, be, the, the short, the whole short squeeze will happen when they lose control, and say it starts to get to a point right where you just have hedge funds and shorters and whoever's tapping now that needs to cover, and that's what would push the price to unimaginable highs. But that's why I read, that's why I learn, that's why I'm trying to, you know, look past the charts and look at the information and what has kind of happened in the past and what can happen, okay? So that's all I got for you guys. Hope to catch you in the next video. Have a good weekend. Later.